Chapter Three: Friends or Spies. Gertrude and Claudius were extremely worried about Hamlet. What's the matter with him? Exclaimed Claudius. His behaviour isn't normal for someone of his age. He's always so sad these days," said the Queen. "He never used to be like that." He used to dress smartly too, but now he doesn't care what he looks like. Claudius added, "How much longer can he go on like this?" We must think of something that will cheer him up and help him forget his father's death," Gertrude said, trying to be positive. "What can we do?" What about inviting those two friends of his from Wittenberg to visit? What are their names? Do you mean Rosencrantz and Guildenstern? Gertrude asked. Yes, that's a good idea. Let's write to them now. The two students were flattered to receive a personal invitation from the King of Denmark, and set off for Elsinore immediately. On their arrival at the castle, they received a warm welcome from Claudius and Gertrude. Dear Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, welcome," said Claudius, shaking their hands. "I hope you'll both enjoy your stay at Elsinore. I'm sure Hamlet will be pleased to see you. The Queen and I are very worried about him. He's changed completely since his father's death. I understand that it upset him greatly, but it's time to stop mourning now. Life." Has to go on, doesn't it? Claudius looked at the two men for confirmation, and they nodded their heads vigorously. Good, I see that you are sensible men. He went on. I'd appreciate it if you could stay here for a while and spend some time with him. You grew up together, so you must know him very well. Talk to him, and try and find out if there's anything that's worrying him. If there is, I'm sure we can do something to solve the problem. We will do anything we can to help," replied Guildenstern. "Hamlet is our good friend." "Thank you so much," said Gertrude. "If you succeed in cheering him up, we won't forget it, will we, Claudius?" Why don't you go and look for him now? As Rosencrantz and Guildenstern were leaving the great hall, they passed Polonius, who was going in. My lord, the Lord Chamberlain said, bowing to the king. I believe I've found out what has made your son mad. Not his father's death and our early marriage, asked Gertrude. No, madam, said Polonius, looking very proud of himself. I have a daughter. At least she's mine until she gets married. Who has just given me this letter? Listen, it starts to the most beautiful Ophelia. Did Hamlet write this letter? Asked Gertrude. Please be patient, madam," said Polonius. "And I'll finish reading it to you." I tried to write a poem for you, but I'm not very good at poetry. I can't put my feelings into verse. I just wanted to tell you that I love you more than anyone else in the world. Please believe me when I say that I'll be yours forever, Hamlet. And what did your daughter do when she received this letter? Asked Claudius. She's a good, dutiful daughter, sir," Polonius said. "She passed it on to me immediately. When I read it, I knew I had to do something." He turned to Gertrude. "I had already noticed that they were spending time together, madam. What would you have thought of me if I had turned a blind eye to what was going on between them?" Gertrude showed her appreciation by nodding her head. So, 
The Lord Chamberlain went on. I told her to end the relationship. I ordered her to stay away from him and not to accept any more messages or little gifts from him. And did she do what you told her? asked Gertrude. She did, madam. And immediately afterwards, he started behaving strangely. He stopped eating, stopped sleeping, became weak, and as a result, went mad. Gertrude, said the king, what do you think? Could it be true? I don't know, it could be, the queen replied. Have I ever told you anything that turned out not to be true? asked Polonius, a little offended. No, Polonius, I don't think you have, said the king. You can cut off my head if I am wrong, said Polonius. But I intend to find out the truth. How will you do that? Claudius asked. Well, I've noticed that he often walks up and down the passage for hours these days. The next time I see him, I'll send Ophelia to talk to him. You, my lord, and myself will be behind a curtain. From our hiding place, we'll be able to watch what happens. All right, said the king. We'll try what you suggest. It didn't take long for Rosencrantz and Guildenstern to find Hamlet. He was walking up and down in the passage with a book in his hand. When he heard footsteps approaching, he looked up. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, he cried. What a surprise! It's good to see you, Hamlet, said Rosencrantz, shaking his friend's hand. Yes, said Guildenstern, doing the same. We've missed you. How are you both? said Hamlet, putting his arms around their shoulders. All right. Replied Rosencrantz. Can't complain. Life could be worse. We've seen better days, said Guildenstern. Although Hamlet was pleased to see his friends, he couldn't understand why they had left their studies to come and visit him. Tell me, what brings you to this prison? he asked. What crimes have you committed? Prison, Hamlet. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern looked puzzled. Denmark is a prison. Hamlet answered angrily. The whole world is a prison, but Denmark is the worst. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern exchanged a knowing look. We've come to see you, Rosencrantz said. I don't believe you, replied Hamlet. Come on, we're old friends. There shouldn't be any secrets between us. Please, in the name of friendship, tell me the truth. They sent for you, didn't they? My uncle father and aunt mother. The two young men looked embarrassed and admitted that it was true. They had come because Claudius had asked them to. What have they asked you to do? said Hamlet. They said you had changed. They're worried about you. They thought we might be able to cheer you up, that's all, explained Guildenstern. Hamlet, we're your friends, said Rosencrantz. We want to help you. Tell us why you're so sad. I don't really know why, replied the prince, looking more melancholic than ever. Life has lost its meaning for me recently. I get no pleasure from anything anymore, not even exercising. Instead of beauty, I see only ugliness. And although I know that a human being is the most amazing thing ever created, to me, we are just dust. People no longer interest me. That's a pity, said Rosencrantz, smiling. Because a company of actors is on its way here. 
We passed them on the road, but if people don't interest you any more, you won't want to see them. Which company? asked Hamlet, his face suddenly lighting up. He enjoyed theatrical performances very much and often went to the theatre in Wittenberg. Your favourite one, the company of tragic actors, replied Rosencrantz. Just at that moment, they heard the sound of music and cheering outside the walls of the castle. That must be them, said Hamlet. They've arrived. Come on, let's go and welcome them to Elsinore. The three friends ran out of the passage in the direction of the noise. On the way, they bumped into Polonius, who had also decided to go out and greet the company. My Lord Hamlet! He shouted. The actors have come to Elsinore. Silly old fool, said Hamlet under his breath and carried on running towards the crowd of people. He knew all the members of the company well and shook their hands warmly. Please give us a sample now of what we can expect tomorrow, he said to the main actor. What about that speech about the fall of Troy and the death of the Trojan king and queen, Priam and Hecuba, the one people praised so much? The actor recited the speech with great feeling and received a loud and long applause from the crowd for his efforts. Afterwards, Hamlet took him to one side and asked him to perform a play called The Murder of Gonzago the following night for them. Certainly, my lord, replied the actor. Good. Thank you. Now follow Polonius, that gentleman over there. He'll take you to your rooms. Hamlet looked around for his two friends. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, I'm going to my room now, but we'll see each other tomorrow. Enjoy your stay at Elsinore. The actor's performance had made a deep impression on Hamlet, and he wanted to be alone. What a useless person I am! He exclaimed to himself angrily. Why can't I express my feelings as convincingly as that actor expresses the feelings of the character he's playing? What's wrong with me? My father tells me to avenge his murder, and what am I doing about it? Nothing! Just mooching around and continually putting off what I know I have to do? Is it because I'm a coward? It must be. If I were brave, I'd have killed Claudius long ago. I need to take action. I must think of a plan to catch the king out. What can I do? Hamlet paced nervously up and down his room with his head in his hands. Suddenly, he stopped. I have it, he said excitedly. I've heard that guilty people are sometimes so affected by the play they are watching that they confess their crimes afterwards. In the murder of Gonzago, the king is killed with a dagger. But I'll rewrite the murder scene. Instead of being stabbed... The king will be poisoned in the same way as my father was. The look on Claudius's face as he watches the play will tell me if he is guilty or not. Yes, that's the way to catch the king out.